Glad to have you join us on News Now. Here are some stories we are tracking. I am Margaret Opera. President Mohamed Bouhari on Monday returned to Abuja after attending the 77th edition of the United Nations General Assembly held in New York. The president was received at the Namdi Azikiwe airport by senior government officials, including his chief staff professor Ibrahim Gambari, the minister of the Federal Capital Territory Malam Mohamed Musa Bello, the inspector general of police Al Khalil Usman Baba, with some other senior military and intelligence officers. During his eight day stay in the United States for the event, President Buhari addressed world leaders on Wednesday, calling for debt cancellation for developing countries and promising a free, fair, and credible election in Nigeria, among other issues. Spotlighting what he described as the burden of unsustainable external debts, President Buhari stressed that it was important for world leaders to take the action to ease the burden. The federal government, through the National Universities Commission, has directed vice chancellors to reopen universities and resume academic activities. The NUC Director of Finance and Accounts, Sam Onazi, on behalf of the Executive Secretary of the Commission, Abubakar Rashid, directed the vice chancellors to ensure that ASU members immediately resume, commence lectures, restore the daily activities and routines of the various university campuses. The letter was addressed to all vice chancellors, pro chancellors, and chairmen of governing councils of federal universities. Public universities in the country have been shut since February 14, 2022, when members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities embarked on an industrial action over poor welfare packages and some unpaid entitlements. The Nigerian electricity national grid has collapsed again, the sixth time this year. The last national system collapse was recorded on the 13th of June 2022. Checks on national system operators' data showed that as 12 noon today, no power generation plant was on the grid. Further checks show that as at 10 a.m., 19 plants were generating a combined 3,302 megawatts with Shiroro Hydro at 573 megawatts. In a notice to its customers, the Enugu Electricity Distribution Company, EEDC, informed its esteemed customers of a system collapse which occurred at 10.51 a.m. today, 26 September 2022. And this has resulted in the loss of supply currently being experienced across the network. The Transmission Company of Nigeria, which manages the grid, was yet to advance reasons for the latest collapse as at the time of filing this report. And away from that, the leaders of the Social Democratic Party, SDB, have converged on the ancient city of Ibadan, where they have identified the party as the most credible and best prepared to rescue the Nigerian nation from its present socioeconomic woes. Now, speaking at the event, the presidential candidate of the SDP, Adewali Adebayo, urged Nigerians to queue up behind candidates that have that could positively impact their lives and turn around the future fortune of the citizenry for good. Our people should be trading in ideas, trading in competing technologies and methodologies for the future. You, are, you use your poor decision and injustice to force them to be interrogating religion. So there's no church you go to today that they don't ask God, God, have you abandoned us? Are we so incompetent? that we cannot be part of leadership in this country. But that issue will not have arisen, if not because of that injustice done. And if you say, well, it doesn't matter, every accumulation of injustice normalizes injustice. And a society that normalizes injustice will never know peace. That is why in Nigeria, the greatest prayer, the most common prayer is just is peace. We want peace in the land. But peace doesn't come by prayer. Peace comes by doing justice. And you can't do justice without starting with saying the truth. The truth about the future of Nigeria today lies in SDP. Because without making noise, we are doing justice within, and we are going to do justice to the Nigerian people. Now, emerging reports suggest that a police officer identified as Idris Musa has been killed by bandits at Makera Quarters, Kwakware community along Katsina, Dibia Road. 
An eyewitness narrated that the gunman arrived in the community on Monday at about 7 a.m., shooting sporadically while chasing the bus conveying some passengers. According to the source, the effort made by the disease police inspector to repel the terror group proved abortive even as the return fire on the police leading to the death of the officer. After shooting him there, the bandits are said to have burned the inspector's vehicle after they which, which they were abducted, unspecified numbers of passengers whisking them away to a location yet to be determined. And now Alex Okonkwo, a security analyst, joins me to react to this development and other security challenges. Thank you so much for joining us, Alex. Welcome to News Now. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me. All right. But can you react to, as a security analyst, can you react to the killing of this policeman by bandits? Well, yes, we, we've had several cases like that. We also have that happening in the south, um, in the south, uh, south, south, you know, whether the um, the petroleum um, um, uh, areas of the country. Uh, it happened a bit in Lagos as well, if you remember, um, uh, not too long ago when uh, policemen were attacked. So, what is happening is this: um, in, in the last two years, I would say, in fact, let me even say, since the Enfast issue. Um, you would have noticed even in your day to day life that um, the police in general have lost a bit of their authority, have lost a bit of the respect we have for them. And so this has to be rebuilt gradually. Probably with the next elections, there will, come, you know, there will have a bit of impetus with the new IG and with the new government as well. We are suffering the consequences of having deteriorated our own police. It did not start this year. Uh, but it's something that's been coming up for some decades, and the NSAS issue uh, confronted it. I would not say that it was wrong to do the NSAS. What I'm saying is that um, we overstretched it as usual, as we do in Nigeria, into the normal police which we, we, we need and require. So we are, we are suffering the consequences of uh, such actions. Well, how can you access Nigerian security architecture? Nigeria is 62, and we still have cases of insecurity here and there, and bandit tree kidnapping, amongst others. Would you say that's a problem with the security system of Nigeria? Well, I, I didn't hear the question. So you, yeah, I'm asking, Nigeria at 62, how can you assess the security architecture of Nigeria? Well, uh, we, we are not doing badly at, 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 at present. I mean, we started uh, badly initially when this government came in. Uh, I've mentioned it on several occasions that it took quite a lot of, a lot of time to uh, get their plan in place. They took quite a lot of time to work out the coordination between all the other agencies. I will remind people that we have the civil defense, we have the police force, and we have the armed forces all working together, even with the customs and uh, the immigration services. So these are, these are quite complex um, uh, uh, agencies to combine. They don't have the same forces, they don't have the same manpower. In other countries, in mostly developed countries, there is a unit that now assembles them and they work together. So in Nigeria, it took us a while to get that to be done. Uh, now that it's been set in place, the results are showing. However, however, we must say it here, that it's not every time there is an incident, and I say an incident, that does not mean our insecurity uh, apparatus is uh, falling down. There will always be killings in Nigeria. We will never have a zero killing situation, kilo, zero death situation. So, uh, I mean, Nigerians should forget that. What we are saying is to reduce it to a minimum. Hmm. So, it is like saying arms robbery will never happen in Nigeria. That is that is a uh, utopic where we are lying to ourselves. What we are saying is to reduce the occurrence to the strict minimum acceptable. Now, talking about reduction of the crimes uh, with the issue of killings and insecurity in Nigeria, what solutions can be preferred as a security analyst that you are? Yes, I would say, I would say and I've always said this, for those of you who have been following me for a while, they will know. I've always said that in the military aspect of it, we're not doing too bad. Where we are failing, and this will surprise some Nigerians, is in all the other parts that are non-military. So the reason why you have banditry is because of poverty. It's because of chronic youth unemployment, and I said chronic because it's been coming for years, for decades. We have weak and insufficient uh, governance in some areas, which means even local governments are not active. My state, for example, does not have a local government uh, uh, chairman. They are all caretakers, and mm -hmm. they've been like that for 20 years. You see, and we have ethnic and religious differences. So there are a lot of social and economic um, causes of insecurity that are not being handled, probably because of lack of the funds, 
and also lack of the knowledge of what to do. The military, the military aspect of the security is actually the easiest. Once you have the necessary arms and you know who you're fighting, you can shoot them and kill them. The problem is, how do we stop people from getting into banditry? That the military cannot do. How do you stop five young men from kidnapping somebody? The military cannot do that. We would have to go into social and economic solutions, which are more long term. How do you reduce youth unemployment? It's not going to happen in one year. It's not going to happen in five years. But the programs should be in place to make sure a young Nigerian can find his way in this country without falling into either Yahoo or banditry or kidnapping. They are all the same level. They are all violent. They are in a way or another. If the, if, the, if the Yahoo guys steal your five million naira, trust me, you will take it as violent. So we have issues that are more social economic than military. The military will have to do their part. But to stop people from going into banditry, you will have to do more social and economic policy. All right, thank you so much, Okonkwa Alex, for sharing your thoughts on this conversation.